today I'm going to go on an adventure to Flagstaff that's going to have about four purposes. One is to test my car that just got repaired, put it uh, to the test going up the steep grade for an hour. Two is to get out of the heat because it's 107 here and I think at the top of the mountain it's supposed to be about 75 degrees. Um, the other thing we're going to do is ride the ski lift up because that sounds like fun and I haven't been on the ski lift since I was 12 so I want to find this uh, photograph that I have and recreate it. And the final thing we're going to do is play around doing some scientific experiments with our blood oxygen levels and uh, maybe some fancy breathing techniques. So here I've got this device that's called a pulse oximeter. You can pick one up on Amazon for about $10. This one's from the Face Lake company, which I think sounds like some weird gross sexual act or something. Um, so you can see that this bottom number is the percent oxygen saturation and the top number is my pulse which is quite high from running around shooting video so it's about 96 here and that is uh, typical for our elevation which is about 3,600 feet. The closer you get to sea level, the more it's going to read 99. And the higher up, the lower it's going to go. Now we're showing you my roommates, which is 96, 97, same thing. He thinks this is a game that he's going to win today when we get to the top of the mountain by having a better uh, oxygen saturation because he drank yerba mate today. So we'll see if that is true. So what we're doing right now is driving the car up the steep hill to Flagstaff. Um, this is my 99 Honda CRV that I uh, just got the engine replaced and some work on the suspension done. And that's a funny story because it's kind of like the miracle car. We're testing to see if it's really a miracle. Um, what happened was I, my car was broken down for like six months just sitting in the driveway. I wasn't selling it, I wasn't fixing it, I was just like kind of thinking about it and not doing anything. And then um, I was just about to take it to Phoenix and get this work done on it for, well the engine and, and then stuff was going to be $1,100 or a little bit more depending on what day they quoted me. And uh, then I was going to have the suspension too. And uh, so right when I was going to take it, like on Monday, the night before, I got a note on my door. After six months, I got a note on my door the night before I was going to take it to the mechanic to, that the, this guy who was driving by had seen it and uh, wanted to offer to fix it or buy it. So I uh, took it to him because it seemed like... Uh, good sign and uh, everything. He seemed, he seemed like a decent fellow about my age, seemed to know what he was talking about. So um, dropped it off with him and he did the whole job for only $825. So that was pretty cool and he did a lot of hard work on it because it's super rusty underneath and he went all the way down to Phoenix and picked up uh, the used engine for me which is about, you know, 90 mile drive one way and it's 120 degrees down there and then he went all the way to Prescott for me to get a new uh, shock fork up from the junkyard because one of them broke so uh, good deal so now we're testing it on this uh, sort of death to cars trap here which the, Ver the Verde Valley on both sides rises up steeply and there's always about at least two or three cars broken down on any given day. So far it's doing good. You can sort of see the San Francisco peaks coming into view in front of us. It's pretty hazy today and it's all 
also uh, we tried to wash my windshield but it's so hot that the fluid the, that you wash it with was just like drying as soon as you applied it to the windshield so it's pretty cloudy but there they are and we're gonna go up to the tuppy top snowball before going up on the chairlift and it's about 9,000 feet and you can see that from home my oxygen percent has dropped to 90 from 96 and Nix is 91 90 88 lift now and uh, it's pretty fun but I'm always scared getting on and off because when I was first time I ever went downhill skiing I had no idea what I was doing and my parents dragged me out skiing and when we got to the part where I was supposed to get off the chairlift I was on one all by myself for some reason and uh, I was paralyzed with fear and I couldn't get off and it was raising up above the ground and finally I snapped out of it and leapt off with my skis on and it was horrible. There's a forest fire behind us. You see the smoke rising up off the mountain back there. Snow! Okay, so one thing I'm going to try at the top is to do some Wim Hof style breathing and if you don't know, Wim Hof is like this Dutch daredevil guy who's kind of a cult figure for teaching uh, breathing techniques in combination with cold water immersion for uh, just generally being awesome and improving your health and being able to tolerate cold and altitude and things like that so his techniques basically uh, glorified hyperventilation and when you hyperventilate, what you're doing is breathing out excess CO2. So that lowers the level of CO2 in your blood and makes it so that you um, your, your blood becomes alkaline and you get these kind of weird side effects like tingling and numbness. And it, so it's kind of weird because when you listen to Wim, he explains it like that the oxygen is pumping through you, diffusing all through you from you breathing harder, but that's really not scientifically what happens as far as people know about hyperventilation. What happens is you probably get less oxygenated because of the various effects of the vasoconstriction and but anyway, like at sea level, you're already oxygenated to about 99% as we were demonstrating, trying to demonstrate with the little finger thing, except we weren't at sea level. If you are at a higher elevation, you actually can raise your oxygen level by breathing harder. And that's it, like mountaineers call that pressure breathing. And you basically just kind of take a deep belly breath and blow it out hard and that improves the air exchange so you bring in more oxygen but you may also be re reducing your carbon dioxide even farther which is already reduced because that's uh, you're already sort of naturally hyperventilating at elevation so that's all what we're going to try and uh, I think we'll see our little finger machine go up with the oxygen saturation but a lot of stuff that Wim says is kind of weird and I don't really believe it like he has one video where he is uh, going swimming and uh, he says that his vision goes out because it's cold and it frozen but I think that he probably was losing oxygen because the retina is like the first thing to go and let anybody in the Air Force or an airline pilot will tell you that at high altitude, your vision starts to go. Here 
we just got the last people to be led on to the scenic overview trail. So we're lucky. I said 22 years ago when I was 12 years old, my grandparents took me to Arizona on an elder hostel trip. And this is me standing in this probable exact location. So we're going to recreate the photograph. And I still have my flannel. You can see how, what a grungy little teen I am. I still have my flannel, which is, I actually pulled this out to wear on top of the mountain before I thought, I thought about taking the shirt and then I was like, oh, I should take that old photograph of me wearing the flannel. Hey, if you walk forward a little bit, you'll be in more of the perfect position, like forward as in towards the chairlift. There you go. happens if I start hyperventilating. hyperventilate and make it go up and then I'm gonna hold my breath and see how low it goes so Here you go, you're Fast. Go pop right back up there for a second. before we even got into the death zone. Do one more experiment. I got my bottle here, empty bottle sealed with air from the top of the mountain. I'm gonna see how uh, crunchy it gets when we get out of the car at home. Uh, it's a little known fact that there's something called mountain gas, which is when the air inside of you expands when you climb the mountain and you get all bloated and farty. That's particularly uncomfortable given that many people climbing mountains are eating things like dehydrated beans and soy goop and uh, sleeping in nylon sleeping bags. Man, I'm not really sure what the price is, but it's so fucking stupid. All right, just to show you my compressed bottle now that we're home and the air pressure at 3,500 feet is higher, crushing the outside of the bottle. And as for the car behind me, it is uh, doing fine, running fine, except for it still has a small exhaust leak, which the guy warned me about, which uh, is kind of prominent on the uphills. So that sucks because my multiple, multiple chemical sensitivity acts up with even a, kind of a small amount of exhaust. But for the flat parts and downhill, it's not so bad. <laughs> 